There are these gaps in my life that are really hard for me to digest. Gaps of time on my computer, my folders, my hard drives, my social media, where there's little to zero documentation of my life. And I'm sort of left to only rely on what I can from my memory. What my brain is able to recall, which turns out isn't like very much because our brains are too busy doing other stuff. So in a way, I'm sort of thankful for these gaps and thankful that I found them early on. These gaps, they torment me so much that I decided that I would never let it happen again. And I decided that a few years ago, I was going to intentionally document my life every single day. And here's why you should too. We all know what it feels like to be transported back into a memory, into a moment in time in your life that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to recall if it wasn't triggered by a smell, a taste, a song, a photograph. When we're suddenly reminded of our lives and the places we've been, the people we've been with, the, the moments that have made us feel something, moments that we almost had forgotten about or haven't thought about in a really long time. When this happens, we're overcome with this acute sense of desire for the happiness that we felt in that moment. And this is called nostalgia. Nostalgia is the feeling we get when we remember these moments that had happened in our lives. But this time when we're remembering them, they feel a little bit different than the first time that we actually experienced them. When we're remembering these moments in our lives, they're usually much warmer. They're, they're feeling a lot more relaxed when you're reliving them than the first time that you would experience them. When you think about the moment that you're experiencing right here, right now, it can kind of be difficult for you to fully enjoy that moment. How could we when we always have to focus on what comes next? What happens after this moment? So here's a short story for you. 2018 was a year that I remember feeling completely overwhelmed and conquered by life. I was 23, I had just quit my job. I was incredibly anxious. I was starting a career in filmmaking, which I didn't even know what that meant at the time. I just moved in my first apartment where I was paying rent when I had little to zero money. My girlfriend lived two and a half hours away from me. And during that period of time, she was struggling with an eating disorder, which I felt like I couldn't do anything to help with. I would sometimes worry if I would even have money to pay for the gas to go and visit her, or even if I would have the money to pay for my food for the next week. And then just to put the cherry on top, I decided to buy a car that I couldn't afford at the time. So yeah, you could say things were looking great, but luckily enough for me, this period of time is probably the most documented part of my entire life. So as I had mentioned, my girlfriend was struggling with this eating disorder and it was getting worse and worse. And in an attempt to break this vicious cycle that she was going through, we decided to just get away from it all. So what we did was decide to take a road trip for 30 days around the entire United States. We drove from Philadelphia through the Midwest to Utah, up California coast to Washington, all the way back to Philadelphia through the north. Sleeping in my Jeep, eating our meals at, at rest stops. It was just the two of us seeing what seemed to be the entire world together. It, it felt like a movie that we were living in and it probably sounds like a movie to you. It was one of the greatest parts of my entire life. But for me, on that trip, at the time that I was actually living through it, I had no money. I had no jobs to come back home to. I had bills to pay. Uh, we were driving around in this car that I couldn't afford. And I was putting all of the trip's expenses on a credit card. As a, a 23 year old going through this, I can definitely say that I was totally scared and, and feeling very unconfident about what was to come on the other side of that trip. So even though it, it sounded like a movie, and it, it was looking back at the best time of my life, at the time, it was really hard to, to fully digest that and, and to enjoy what it was we were experiencing together. So obviously when you're road tripping around the country and you're going through this once in a lifetime opportunity, you're going to document a lot. You're gonna take a lot of photos and you're gonna take a lot of videos. I'm so grateful that I did because when I look back at those photos, I look back at those videos today, I'm able to relive that entire trip through the lens of nostalgia. I'm able to relive all those little moments that we experienced along those trips, those moments that I'd be able to document and capture. But this time, I, I'm able to experience them with a sense of control and knowing what's going to come next. So looking back at these moments through hindsight, knowing the future, 
having that control, being able to really fully enjoy that moment. It helps you really to appreciate you know, what you've been through and what these moments have helped you become today. When you're able to look back at these artifacts that you've created for yourself, these photographs, these videos, you're able to see what you've been through. You're almost able to see yourself from this godlike perspective, looking down at your past self and see yourself stumbling through these moments in your life and making it out perfectly fine out the other side every time. And creating this nostalgia for yourself, it doesn't just act as you know, a tool for you to reminisce about your past life, but instead it really acts as motivation for your future self. As human beings in our present state, meaning like the moment that we're living in right now, it's so easy for us to get caught in this feeling of being lonely, feeling depressed, uh, feeling sad, and kind of feeling like this has always been how you felt, then this will always be how you will continue to feel in the future. But these artifacts that we've created for ourselves through documentation remind us just how untrue that really is. We look back at these moments of ourselves, laughing with friends, playing with our pets, crying in the mirror, like all the ups and downs that we experienced throughout our lives. It reminds us that we've been through this roller coaster of life and it reminds us that you know, just because we feel this way now, it's not always going to feel this way. So the other day I found these videos on my phone from a few months back. The top of a blueberry muffin is unrivaled. 10 times better than its counterpart, the bottom. Half of a blueberry muffin. Just wet cake. I have no recollection of filming this. I have no idea why I chose to document this portion of my life, what I was going through in this current moment. And what's crazy about this moment and the nostalgia that it brings me is that I, I don't feel any negative feelings towards these videos. I, I don't feel embarrassed. I don't feel ashamed but instead I kind of get a sense of joy from watching this. Even though probably in this moment, I felt like this is a moment that I'm never gonna get out of and I'm always gonna feel like this. Uh, obviously that wasn't the case. Obviously I'm able to look back at this, uh, laugh about it almost, and use it as a stepping stone for me going forward. These sort of videos kind of act as a reminder for me in that the pressure I put on myself to perfect the moment that I'm living in right now it just kind of stupid and unnatural and just like not at all necessary. When we're able to better appreciate the moments that we had in our lives in the past, it's going to enable us to better appreciate the moments that we are living in right now. When that happens and you're able to have confidence in yourself, in your future, that's when you're really going to be able to grow as a human being and take more life risks and be able to live a life that you've always dreamed of. Nostalgia can produce a wild amount of benefits for your mental health and Creating these, these triggers for yourself, more opportunities for yourself to unlock this nostalgia. Documenting your life isn't about the past. It's about fueling yourself for the future and preparing yourself for what's to come and being able to live life with more gusto and like bravery than, than you ever would have been able to before. So how do we document our life? And more importantly, how do we do it with intention? I'm not saying that you need to meticulously document every single moment of your entire existence. For one, most moments in your life aren't really worth documenting. But the issue is how do you know what moments are and what moments aren't worth documenting? And like any other skill, it needs to be developed through practice. At first, you might find the act a bit disrupting and overwhelming, pulling you away from the current moment that you're living in. At first you'll have these thoughts of, should I document this or should I not document this? And that alone can you pull you away from the moment. After months and even years, you'll start to develop a feeling for when it's the right time to document. You'll even start to find what mode of documentation starts to work best for you. So here are some tips for you that I've find combined to create a really enjoyable and intentional documentation experience that will hopefully speed up the process for you. My first tip would be to not wait for these grand moments in your life. My biggest mistake when I first started this journey was thinking that the only moments that were worth documenting were big life events shot on 
really big, nice cameras. And through the years, I've found that like just the opposite is actually the truth. I found that I could take a photo from like graduation and throw it in the trash, but the in-between moments, the, the moments of the process were the ones that were truly priceless. I have this photo from Anna a few years ago at this pizza place on the Jersey Shore Boardwalk. And it's our favorite pizza place. And she's just about to bite into this giant slice of pizza. It was taken on a really crappy camera and there was like nothing like grandioso about it. But for some reason, it's one of my favorite photos and favorite like memories to look back on. In this moment, like our relationship was like still pretty young and we didn't know what to expect out of it. Uh, we were both poor, we could both barely like ex afford this way too expensive pizza that we're eating at the time. So even if a moment feels mundane at the time, but something inside you is telling you to record it, just do it, just record it, document it. You never know when and where in the future you're gonna see that piece of documentation and you never know what the impact the nostalgia from that moment will have on you. My next tip is to only document like you're the only person that will ever see this piece of documentation. It's important to remember that these moments that you're documenting, they're for you and for no one else. They're not highlights of your life that need to be shared to social media constantly. They're not these show-stopping moments that like everyone else in the world needs to be a part of. When you take away this pressure of shooting for someone else's eyes, that that is when you're able to see what moments in your life really mean the most to you and are really special for you. My next tip would be to use the camera that's on your phone and not worry about the quality. In case you forgot, we are the first generation of human beings to live life with the best documentation tool of all time always in our pocket. We had this little computer in our phone that is able to take very high quality photos, very high quality video, and take a lot of them. And it's really interesting too that it's become such a normal thing to do to take out these camera phones wherever and whenever you are and take a photo and take a video. It's just become a staple of our culture. The unfortunate thing about larger cameras is that they still aren't and I don't think we'll ever be as normalized as taking a quick photo or video on your cell phone. These large cameras take away from the moment, whether you're fumbling with the buttons or you know, whether that, that bigger camera changes the moment itself, the way it impacts people, it changes their behavior, it changes the whole general tone of the moment itself. Our camera phones are so normalized and so small and so much less intruding that it keeps the moment true to itself and it keeps it authentic. It's so easy to just flip out your phone, hit the shortcut to the camera, auto exposed right away, you take the photo, it saves automatically, it goes up into the cloud or whatever technology does. <laughs> I've never looked back at a moment that I've documented on my phone and been completely enthralled by the nostalgia that it's brought me and thought to myself, oh, this would have been so much cooler if I had only shot it on my cinema camera. Like, no, that doesn't happen. And I don't think it ever will happen. The important thing is that you have this moment and you have it captured and you're able to relive it time and time again for the rest of your life. My next tip would be to take mostly video clips if you can. I take short clips on my phone of just what's happening in front of me from my point of view, my perspective, nothing too fancy. Video for me has always been my favorite mode of storytelling because it, it hits you from both uh, your video senses and your audio senses. When you're able to look back at these capture moments and you're able to see what you're seeing, hear what you're hearing, it, really? it, it allows you to empathize with that moment to a much greater degree. And the great thing about capturing video versus a photo is that sometimes with a photo, you're only trying to capture that one perfect moment and it kind of puts a lot more stress and pressure on you. With video, you're taking hundreds of frames and you're able to capture all those imperfect in-between moments. And that segues into our next tip, which is only give yourself one shot. Just as your life is not perfect, your documentation should not be perfect. With digital photography and videography, it's so easy to get caught up in taking the same shot over and over again, 10 times until you get it like just right, even though kind of looks exactly the same as the nine other shots before it. Capture that moment once so that we're able to put our tool for documentation away 
and then actually live and actually enjoy that moment. My last tip is to never miss a day. You know, there's gonna be some days that you forget, but the best way to keep yourself from forgetting is to practice it every single day until it eventually becomes a habit for you. When you miss a day, it might become two days, then three days, then a week, then a month, and then eventually it becomes these large gaps of time where you don't have any documentation of your life, and that's when it starts to become an issue. And that's really what the inspiration for creating this video was. I had these huge gaps in my life that I can't remember much from them, and that's really sad for me, and I don't want to to ever happen again for me and I don't ever want it to happen again for you. Some days you're gonna have more things to document than others, but I always try to take at least one photo or video every single day. A lot of this is really just trial and error. You're, you'll eventually find uh, the best way for you to document your life in a way that you enjoy it and in a way that you're still able to remain present. Apart from everything that we've talked about today, uh, you should be documenting your life because it's your life. And to the best of my knowledge, it's the only life that you're ever going to have and it's worth documenting those moments that you've lived through. You never know when in life you're going to hit moments uh, that are tough for you, rough patches, and you don't know uh, when that documentation will be needed most and when you'll need that little boost of nostalgia in your life. For me, I come from a family with a long history of dementia and memory loss uh, in old age and that really kind of scares me like a lot. I don't know if there will eventually be a cure for diseases that cause loss of memory by the time I'm an old man, but I'm hoping that all this documentation on all this remembering of my life, I don't know, maybe it might do something to help, or at least it might help the people around me who might look through these memories I've documented one day and maybe teach them, inspire them to live an incredible life full of love, imperfection, joy, and adventure. Thank you as always for watching. I love you. Bye.